explorers we are back in universal's islands of adventure i'm on the hunt for adventure and here there are plenty of islands in which we can find it in roller coasters it's incredible it's it's just incredible as per the norm we are just exploring no agenda today we're just going to be wandering and seeing what the universal islands of adventure has to offer us but i'm sure we will be making a stop to check on the progress of universal islands of adventures newest attraction the Velocicoaster. coaster now with an opening date june 10th 2021 look at this they have a sheen. The, the smaller leaves, they have a sheen. The bigger leaves don't. What's the deal? Do we have any botanists, any plant experts in the comment section who can tell me what's going on with these leaves here? Foliage. The, at the lagoon really I don't I don't know if this has a name proper but we're at the islands of adventure lagoon and right here there's a there's like a duck per se is that purely aesthetical or did that actually did that actually send water vessels out upon the lagoon because that would be that would be something I mean it's got a walkway it's got a railing I assume this was something at some point what was it Here in Seuss Landing, we got the things here, but definitely we have this sign that gives direction to the attractions and other things within the Islands of Adventure. And I don't know why, but it tickles me to no end to see Jurassic Park and Harry Potter, other franchises in the Dr. Seuss font. Can you imagine a Dr. Seuss take on Harry Potter or what a Jurassic Park in rhyme might be. The T-Rex was behind me. He let out a roar. Man, that's a big, big dinosaur. Then the T-Rex started chasing them. It was a total disaster. Malcolm looked in the mirror and said, must go faster. John Hammond was quiet and Ellie was tense. He said, I promise you truly, we spared no expense. We weren't short on dollars. We weren't short on cents, but we probably could have spent more on that electric fence. And she screamed, you never had control. Oh, to think that you could. This whole day has been just awful. But hey, the ice cream's good. Anyways, so uh, I like the signage here, Seuss Landing. Pendus. In one of the gift shops here in Seuss Landing, and uh, what's uh, what's the story here? Are we in the sky, or underwater, or in some kind of weird gear factory with a with a very hard to read gauge? Ain't that the truth? Seuss Landing has some of the best views of the lagoon and particularly the Velocicoaster right now. Honestly, it always really blows my mind how empty these spaces are. The park will likely close due to capacity just as it has every day this week today. But there are still all these quiet, quiet, calm, unoccupied pockets. I know it's early yet, but this is still very surprising to me to see some of the most scenic parts are left only for us to explore. That train is parked. Oh, there it goes. 
Wow, what a moment. What a moment to have captured for you guys here on the Happy Place Explorers vlog. Um, uh, like and subscribe. Uh, I'll put the graphic right here. Right here. Because where else are you going to get content like that? Oh my gosh, it stopped again. Wait, 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 wait. Did it stop? Because this one's moving. At some point, it's going to hit that one. And then, we, then we're going to have an issue. Did, did this one ever return moving? Okay, yeah. So it's going now. Because when that one wasn't moving again, and this one was, it made me think that, that maybe my eyes had deceived me. There is no reality really here in Seuss Landing. And holy cow. Okay, so now that it's happening continually, I'm assuming this is a loading thing. But hey, it's been a thrill. So, one last look at the stop train. And just believe with me that that was just some unique and wild occasion that just happened. We're Happy Plays Explorers. Come explore with us. Holy molasses, guys. Are you guys seeing that? It is a lost continent duck. <gasps> or what if it's another kind of duck? What if it's a Jurassic Park duck that is lost in the lost continent? Do you think it could be a Marvel duck? Could it be Howard the duck that has just sort of drifted over to the lost continent? I mean, anything is possible. According to this sign right here, this is the Funa Laguna. Does that sound right? Does Seuss Landing have the ability to dictate what this whole area is? Shouldn't this be international waters for the islands? Because Funa, Funa Laguna, that sounds pretty Seuss-ish. Look at that guy. Look at that guy's eyes. Look at his expression. He's got the expression where he's like, yeah, I know this is weird, but, but we just got to go with it. And then right across the way, you've got Poseidon's Fury over here and you got the arm. Now my mind would tell me that that's, that that's Poseidon maybe because of the water that's spilling forth and Poseidon is the, is the god of the sea as they say, but I don't know. Look at, the, look at the position of that arm. He would have to be bending like three different elbows to achieve that, unless, unless it's just a statue and it, and it broke. I am still so, so very intrigued by the idea, the little I've heard, I've let myself become aware of Poseidon's Fury. It is closed for the time being, but I'm hoping that someday soon it will open and I can see what all, all the, all the Fury's been about. The Poseidon's Fury. Does that, does that word work here? I have Fury, I have a, a typical, it's not an angry Fury, it's just a passionate Fury about wanting to see Poseidon's Fury. I mean, I really like water features and this whole thing seems to really feature water. We have a penguin next to a hippo. This is the kind of thing where it's like, I'd love to see the BBC version of this, where the penguin actually has to meet up with the hippo in the wild. Like, what would that, how does that end? How does it end? I don't know. He doesn't know. Probably not good for him because hippos are ruthless. Obviously, look at this. Ruthless. Ruthless. Hello. The Hogwarts castle here, at least on the walkway to Jurassic Park, is never not impressive to me. I know, I know, I know there has to be some aspects of force perspective going on, but but I don't know. I honestly don't know. 
Estamos en verano. I still haven't tried a butterbeer personally and it seems like the universe is telling me it's time because look, just by itself right here in Jurassic Park, a lone butterbeer. I mean, honestly, I probably would, but I know a lot of people, people that birthed me, people that have married me, would be really disappointed if I actually had that butterbeer. I mean, look at it. It is untouched. It's still got the froth at the top. I've just been pacing here back and forth for like 45 minutes. Should I? Shouldn't I? Maybe I should just go ahead and buy a fresh one. I think that's what Islands of Adventure is trying to tell me. I hope you guys enjoyed that bit because everyone who has been <laughs> around here has been watching me film an unattended butterbeer for like five minutes. So, so I'm just gonna get out of here for the time being because I feel eyes upon me. And as the music swells, we have our first cue, this new to me signage for the Velocicoaster coming summer 2021, which we now know to be June 10th. Coming down the pathway here, immediately met by a frozen Velociraptor, likely visible from the Velocicoaster. Now these Velociraptors behind me are not moving and I hope that is not a preview of what the full-on attraction will be. I'm hoping there are going to be at least a few audio animatronic dinosaurs in this experience when it opens in June. And I mean, I get it. I think these, I think these are actually fixtures for an entrance. Now that I'm getting a second look at it, we'll walk through and probably I believe the entrance is more closer that way. All right, I need to settle down a little bit. store dedicated to the secret life of pets. I think this suggests it's only a matter of time. It would seem at this spot, right against the lagoon here, no one comes to these spots. This is gonna be the best area to, for now, best area for now to get the closest look, the best look at the Velocicoaster in action. Once again, opening on June 10th. It's going to be wild. And I've been standing here filming for about 10 minutes or so, and they have been pretty impressively regular with how fast those cars are going through. I'm serious, like as soon as that one disappears, it's less than 10 seconds. 10 seconds-ish. Can we put a timer? 15 seconds. It's less than 15 seconds. Before another one appears like so. Right at the top there. And so that makes me want to believe that this thing is going to have really great hourly capacity. Perhaps the lines, the lines are going to be long when it first opens. Obviously, everyone's going to want to get their first ride on that, myself included. But the fact that the cars are coming around so fast gives me a good idea that they're going to be, they're going to be rapidly pushing people through this thing. And as enticing as all of this track here is to me, I am really excited about that. I'm most excited about what's going on in this building because this is where I believe, I mean, when that's not happening, that's where I believe a lot of the story elements are going to be happening. I'm expecting there to be a lot of screen 
aspects in there. I mean, this is universal after all. But a part of me is also hoping that there's a fair amount of audio animatronics and that when we do see those animatronics, they won't be going that fast when we speed by them. I spy a dinosaur right there. That one is not moving and I think it's another one of those adorning pictures like we saw at the entrance over there. My hopes are really high for Velocicoaster. Uh, pun intended, because of the height of a roller coaster. Yeah, my expectations are high and they're getting higher all the time, especially as we get closer, cleaner, exterior views of the ride here on the lagoon, especially inside where we were before, where we can see those those uh, the rock work more closely and the things that we're gonna be weaving in and out of pretty closely. I mean, I'm really excited. Again, most excited about the story element. I really want this to top Hagrid's in form of story, but uh, I don't know. We don't know, none of us know, but we will all know on June 10th and we will find out hopefully then, if not on June 10th, around June 10th, it's gonna be a blast. The Velocicoaster. Making a lot of progress open in April, May, June. Two months, two months. Wow, fast approaching. And of course, it wouldn't be a visit to the Islands of Adventure without a forbidden journey. And yes, Hogwarts is air conditioned. So what does the H stand for? Oh yeah, Avi, Harry. Wouldn't even make a substitute on silver and tea. You're mad, Sam. Just bullish. I'll wager young Mr. Potter and present all beats slipping today. Alright, let's do this. So, do the Dementors drag us to the Chamber of Secrets? Because, whoa, I didn't make that connection yet. Because when you go into that little room, there's a basketball skeleton that I never really took in before. Did we go to the Chamber of Secrets? It all happened so fast. The journey is forbidden, but my exploring tendencies are the opposite of forbidden. <laughs> goodness. I was trying to find a quiet spot to drink my butterbeer and I came across the most adorable susicle ducks in the world. Oh man, they know. Oh, come on guys. Make it to the water. Make it to the water. Fly and be free. You probably don't know how to fly yet, but when you do, you will fly higher than any duck that ever was. Oh ducks. May your dreams be like the park in which you inhabit. Universal, full of adventure. Oh, so it's too much almost. It's too much. They're, they're running to the water. No, they're not. No, they're not. Look at them go. Some of them are like, I'm not ready yet. I'm not ready to go in the water. And they're like, I'm going to stay on the beach. And these guys are like, hey, guys, wait up. I want to go in the water. It's hot out. And the ducks are like, come on in, the water's fine. And now they're all family again. The duck saga here today at Universal. Oh, and look at this. In the craziness of the ducks, I left my almost full butter beer by itself. So I had a little sip over in Hogsmeade. Wanted to come where it's a little quainter, a little peaceful, more tranquil here in Seuss Landing against the Funa Laguna, as it's called here. I haven't researched that more, but uh... Oh, that is like heavy cream at the top. Do I gotta... That is misleading. I thought that was gonna be like soda foam. It is not. So my mind tells me instantly, cream soda plus magic. So it's basically a cream soda, an A&W. 
but they must have added a little more sugar, definitely more cream. Is that like pure butter at the top? Well, cream is butter. Whoa, I recommend singling out the cream. It's got a very butterscotchy nature to it. It's weird. The second I turned 30, I suddenly had this craving for butterscotch. I love butterscotch all of a sudden. This is new. This is a new thing for me. But I am all about butterscotch. Because I've been trying to eat better in these last few months, I've been all about jello, sugar-free, butterscotch pudding. This is much better than jello, sugar-free, butterscotch pudding. I can hear the ducks. I'm, always, I'm gonna keep tricking on my eyes on the duck. So the butter beer is better than the blue milk or green milk over in Galaxy's Edge. Hands down better, but I have a similar sentiment. This cup was eight and a half dollars. The internet said it was gonna be seven and a half dollars. So you should have seen my jaw drop when they're like, it's gonna be 850 and I was, I was, I would normally, I would normally raise a ruckus, but $8.50 for any kind of drink. That just seems pricey to me. Drinks, I don't like spending money on drinks. I don't like spending calories on drinks. So this is a once, this is a do on your trip kind of thing, but not an everyday occurrence, obviously. I don't think you were thinking about making it an everyday occurrence anyway. But it's definitely cream soda E, touch of butterscotch, more than a touch. Slightly fizzy. The like butterscotchy cream on the top and now the bottom is kind of, kind of my favorite part about this though. All in all, I would give a Harry Potter butterbeer four and a half Diet Cokes out of seven. Excuse me, are you looking for your children? Yes, that way. They look just like you, only smaller and fuzzier. Yep, that's right, just keep going that way. You'll find them. No, thank you. Well, I think that's gonna do it for our day here at Islands of Adventure. I had a wonderful time, as per the usual here. Of course, we'll be back especially here at Islands of Adventure, where of course, the adventure lives on. Until next time, we'll see you in the happy place. Bye.